Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Firstly, apologies for the croakiness in my voice as I'm overcoming the flu. Today we are looking at one of the deadliest attacks in the 21st century in the Philippines, the Resorts World Manila attack, which took place on the 2nd of June 2017 of the Resorts World Manila complex in the Philippines. Now called Newport World Resorts, Resorts World Manila is an integrated resort located in Newport City, next to Terminal 3 of Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Manila, and was opened on the 28th of August 2009. It currently includes six hotels, ten restaurants, the Newport Performing Arts Theatre, which is a 1,500-seat venue for concerts, plays, musicals and conferences, the largest ballroom in the Philippines, and a casino across three floors. The casino features table games, slot machines, and electronic table games. Jesse Javier Carlos was born in 1975 and lived in Santa Cruz in Manila. He was the son of Fernando Carlos and Teodora Carlos. He was formerly employed as a tax specialist at One Stop Shop Tax Credit and Duty Drawback Center before joining the Department of Finance as part of the Government of the Philippines. The Department of Finance is responsible for the formulation and administration of physical policies, management of the financial resources of the government, as well as privatization of government assets and public accountability of corporations owned by the Government of the Philippines. He was married to Angelita Carlos, one year as junior, and had three children. However, Carlos was living a double life. He was an avid gambler to the degree that it was an addiction and controlled his life. Since 2000 sucks, he had been active in cockfighting, including breeding and selling cocks for fighting at his farm in Tanaiwan, Bantangas, which was two hectares. He bought the farm in 2010 for 4 million Filipino pesos or 81,000 US dollars. He was an impulsive gambler and would lose as much as 1 million Filipino pesos or about 17,600 US dollars in one night of cockfighting, according to Dadong Ablayo, the village chairman of Barangay Darasa, where he had his farm. Ablayo was a close friend to Carlos. However, in 2012, Carlos was dismissed by the Department of Finance following an investigation by the Office of the Ombudsman after the Department of Finance's Revenue Integrity Protection Service, which found that Carlos had failed to disclose that he had disproportionately more wealth in assets than his accumulated salary permitted. This included his farm in Tanuan, as well as a property in Manila worth 1.1 Filipino pesos or 22,273 US dollars. Moreover, he had gained additional assets through a supposedly dormant gun dealing business, Armset Trading, which existed under his wife's name. In the Philippines, someone can possess a firearm if aged over 21 and they pass a background check to issue a possession license, having taken a training and safety course. However, a history of mental illnesses or domestic violence will result in a rejection. This is considered to be one of the lightest restrictions for gun laws in Asia. Head of Barangay 339 Zone 34, Edgar Abrigo, would tell Inquirer, a newspaper in the Philippines, that he was a decent man with no record of violence. The debt from Armset Trading only enhanced Carlos's dependency on cockfighting and gambling, and he did not get another job. However, his pursuits of cockfighting did not improve and it got so bad that by November 2016, he was forced to sell his farm for 10 million Filipino pesos or 200,755 US dollars. This was half the asking price and also meant that he could no longer rear cocks and thereby no longer engage in cockfighting. But he didn't receive all of the money from the sale of his farm and only received half of the money in January 2017. He also fell victim to what his wife would call rent tangai scams. Rent tangai scams were a confidence scheme that manifested in the Philippines from early 2017 until 2018, with victims falling to fraudulent promises of rental income when they later found that the properties had either been mortgaged or sold to different persons without their knowledge. Carlos had bought cars which turned out to have been stolen and he then had to return the cars to their rightful owners but lost money on the cars as he never got the purchasing price of the cars back. Moreover, his gambling habits led to his wife leaving him and taking his three children with her and he ended up selling his vehicle and his house in Manila. He even attempted to sell his M4 Bushmaster rifle which he owned and saw as a status symbol. 
he attempted to sell the rifle to Ablayo for 100,000 Filipino pesos or 2,000 US dollars, but this was unsuccessful and Ablayo would state that he regretted not buying the weapon because this would have stopped the shooting. He also tried to unsuccessfully sell his chainsaw. Eventually, he turned to casinos to repay his debts from cockfighting. While it is known that he went to numerous casinos in Manila, he did not go to Resorts World in Manila. He became a big-time gambler, with Inquirer noting that he used to gamble between 100,000 and 500,000 Filipino pesos a day, or between 1,764 US dollars and 8,821 US dollars a day. This continued, and he continued losing more money. His mother would tell CNN Philippines that this changed her son, stating that he was a good person who changed when he started frequenting casinos, stating that her son was just a victim. He fell victim to the casinos. On the 3rd of April 2017, his next of kin contacted PAGCOR, the government-owned Philippine Amusement and Gambling Corporation, kind of like the Gambling Commission in the UK or the Gambling Control Board in the US. Pagcor banned Carlos from entering all casinos in the Philippines on the 3rd of April 2017. National Capital Region Police Officer Oscar Albayalde speculated that this was the catalyst for the attack by Carlos and pushed him over the edge. By this stage, in addition to other non-bank related debt, he had a bank debt of 4 million Filipino pesos or 79,000 US dollars. To put this into perspective, the average monthly salary in the Philippines in 2017 was 47,130 Filipino pesos per month or 565,560 Filipino pesos a year. Indeed, the Department of Finance would report that Carlos was heavily in debt. There was simply no way that an unemployed Carlos could pay it off, and he decided to take it out on what he deemed to be the cause of his misery and financial troubles, casinos. This was also accepted as the motivation by his family, with his father, Fernando, insisting that his son was not mentally ill. However, Filipino police would dispute this motivation and believe that his motivation for targeting the casino was robbery. At around 10pm on the 1st of June 2017, he murdered 38-year-old lawyer and son of Elmir Mitra Sr. Elmir Mitra Jr. and Alvin Cruzin, a former Manila police officer who became a casino financier in a drive-by shooting with the BMW 3 Series car owned by Mitra Jr. crashing and flipping over at the corner of Belen and Perez streets after the car hit a, a gutter. The trio had left for coffee on the 1st of June, which they had at Maximus Hotel in Resorts World Manila, before leaving in Mitra's dark grey BMW 3 Series. In the car accident, along with the two dead bodies, the police found four 9mm casings, six bullets and a 9mm Tanfoglio semi-automatic pistol serial number Z04575. At 11.19pm, Carlos got three litres of petrol from a local refuelling station. He then hailed a taxi at San Lazoro. The taxi driver reported that he spoke fluent Tagalog to him. The driver then drove him to Resorts World Complex, a distance of 14.7 kilometers. Wearing a mask, Carlos entered the Resorts World Complex just after midnight on the 2nd of June 2017. On him in his bag were a .380 Tanfoglio pistol serial number AA04282, his M4 Bushmaster rifle and bottled gasoline. A few minutes after midnight on the 2nd of June 2017, he arrived onto the second floor of the resort. Not uttering any words and ignoring a guard who was questioning him, he opened fire. The gunfire caused mass panic with some guests injured in a stampede following the evacuation and people fled from the first and second floor. Carlos then doused with petrol the felt linings of pohuka tables and cushioned slot machine chairs before igniting a handheld lighter setting the casino alight on fire. At 12.18am, he broke into a safe room, having shot out the locks of secured doors with a rifle, taking 113 million Filipino pesos of gambling chips, worth 2.7 million US dollars at the time. Marcelo Navarro, a Resort World employee, would tell DZMM Radio, guests were screaming, we went to the basement locker room and hid there. 
People were screaming, guests and employees were in panic. When we smelled the smoke, we decided to go for the exit in the car park. That's where we got out. Before we exited, we heard two gunshots and there was thick smoke on the ground floor. Eyewitness Hessa Isabelle would tell BBC News that she could see people screaming and running out of a building. Survivors also smashed through windows to flee. Moreover, a BMW car in the parking lot of a resort exploded. At least 36 people died from smoke inhalation, all of whom were Filipino, by a South Korean man who died from a fatal heart attack. The bodies were found within the casino area and the bathroom. Among the dead were Elizabeth Panilo Gonzalez, the wife of 3rd District of Pampanga congressman and member of the PDP Laban Party, Aurelio Gonzalez Jr as well as the husband of actress Azanif Briones, El Utrio Reyes. A security guard also accidentally shot himself. A combined 70 people were injured in the attack. By 1.30am a SWAT team responded with one of the SWAT units engaging in a gunfight with Carlos in a stairwell, with Carlos wounded in the process. He then fled upstairs to the Maximus Hotel and at 1.46am shot open the door to room 510 which was unoccupied, lit a fire in the corridor and set himself on fire before shooting himself in the head. In a toilet in Maximus Hotel, his .38 Tanfolio pistol, his M4 Bushmaster rifle, as well as the stolen chips worth 113 million Filipino pesos were found. As a result, a combined 40 people had died in the attack. His friend Ablao was shocked, telling Inquirer, I was shocked. He was addicted to gambling, but was never a violent man. His family also struggled to reconcile that their son was responsible for the attack with Teodora Carlos stating, I still don't want to accept that it was my son because my son was a good person. Initially ISIS would claim responsibility for the attack but this was quickly denied by the Filipino police and they found that indeed the, the gunman was a lone wolf. The resort was put into lockdown while a statement released stated that the company is working closely with the Philippine National Police to ensure that all guests and employees are safe. We ask for your prayers during these difficult times. The shooting sent shockwaves across the Philippines. From 1.45 a.m. until 3.45 a.m. during the attack, the main gates of the four terminals of Ninoy Aquino International Airport, opposite Resorts World Manila, were shut down as a precaution. Then President Rodrigo Duterte called Carlos Crazy and questioned Resorts World Manila for the layout of the emergency exits. He also attended the funeral of Eleutilio Reyes and comforted Brinoes during the funeral. The European Union expressed sympathy to the government of the Philippines as well as for family and friends of the victims of the attack. Then President of the United States of America Donald Trump would state it is really very sad as to what's going on throughout the world with terror. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of those affected. However this was erroneous and premature by President Trump. It wasn't a terrorist attack. Melania Trump, the then First Lady of the United States of America, would state on Twitter, My thoughts and prayers go out to the people in Manila. Numerous Filipino senators expressed their sympathy and shock at the attack, with Senator Joseph Victor Ejequito, the representative of San Juan and now Deputy Senator Majority Leader, writing on Twitter, My heartfelt condolences to the family of those who perished during the Resorts World incident. This is very tragic. Senator Sonny Angara would state on Twitter, More senseless deaths at RWM. Prayers for victims and families. Let's all work on making the world a safer, kinder and more inclusive place. Resorts World Manila would also condemn the attack as a cowardly act of a deranged mind. The gambling license of Resorts World Manila was immediately suspended following the attack by Pug Corps. On the 3rd of June 2017, the CEO of Resorts World, Stephen Riley, announced that Resorts World Manila would provide 1 million Filipino pesos or 20,000 US dollars to each of the families of those who had passed away to help with their immediate needs. On the 4th of June 2017, Carlos's parents apologised for their son's actions, but his mother insisted that he was a man led astray by gambling. On the 7th of June 2017, the House of Representatives Committee on Public Order and Safety and Committee on Games and Amusement opened a probe into the attack. This took place at Terminal 3 of the Nanoy Aquino International Airport in Manila. 
The manager of Resorts World, Manila, King Son Sian, admitted that there was a lapse of security. The CEO of Resorts World, Manila, Stephen Riley, stated that some security personnel were not in their posting area when Carlos entered the casino, but Sian defended the organization, stating that management of Resorts World, Manila, was able to execute an emergency protocol allowing thousands of people to evacuate. It was also queried by Sian that as Carlos had left a bag of bullets in a public area, but people believe that there were multiple attackers, leading them to stay put and ultimately suffocate to death. However, the resort didn't get off scot-free. It was found by the House Majority Leader Rodolfo Faginas and Atipolo Representative Romeo Acop that Security Chief Armin Gomez had overstated his credentials and educational background. He claimed to have been admitted to the Philippine Military Academy, but was discharged. He also had minimal training and wasn't there when the attack took place. Indeed, he was on his way home, but only returned to the casino after hearing of the attack. Inevitably, however, the probe did not find the resort liable for the attack. On the 29th of June 2017, Pakakor lifted the license suppression on Resorts World Manila. It hired Black Panda, a private security consultant, to tighten its security procedures with the gambling area on the second floor affected by the attack converted to be part of the shopping mall. By September 2017, the casino had recovered for the most part. Most of its visitorship had returned, with 26,000 visitors a day compared to 28,000 before the attack. On the 18th of April 2023, the Supreme Court of the Philippines, the highest court of the Philippines, reversed the conviction of Carlos of dishonesty over alleged mistakes in his statement of assets, liabilities and net worth, citing the government of the Philippines' failure to comply with procedures under the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for Public Officials and Employees, Republic Act No. 6713. Ultimately, had he not had this conviction, and had he not lost his job with the government of the Philippines, it is possible that Carlos would never have gone on the attack on the 2nd of June 2017, and that 40 people would still be alive today. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment? It helps more than you know, and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet. Have an amazing day, and remember the truth is always more interesting than fuck shit.